Hi, I'm the Woodpecker today. I make the bass and start the leg vice. In my last episode, I managed to glue the top of my future workbench. Now I can start to work on the base. I begin by jointing all the big pieces on two faces. When I have two faces straight, I plane the other two. Eventually, I have all the wood I need to make my base. So I begin by cutting one end of all the pieces straight. I need to cut all my 6 by 6s into passes. Next, I use my x car to cut a mortise pattern onto thin pieces of plywood. When I have all my patterns, I can insert some guide dowels and trace the shape of the mortise. Next, on the drill press, I remove most of the wood. Then I use my pattern and clean the rest of the mortise with a straight bit and a template guide. The first mortise is done. I need to cut this leg to the right length. Trace the next mortise. Remove some wood. And finally, clean the mortise. The first leg is done. I need to make the other ones. I now have the four legs with all their mortises. But on my plan, I have one longer piece for the leg vise, which is just beside this leg. But before I can do anything, I need to cut it to length. I also have two mortises to make on this piece. If I want to glue it to the leg without any slipping, I need to mark and drill three domino mortises. So now this is my base, upside down on my workbench. I'm ready to begin to work on the stretchers. I begin by cutting all of them to their right length. I want to use my panther rotor to make the tenons, but unfortunately, I don't have any guides for that size. So I cut two plywood squares to make my new patterns. After tracing some round corners, I remove the excess wood. Next, I need to cut a support for my new patterns. Since I still have a quarter inch straight bit in my X-carve, I controlled it manually to cut the 2 eighths adjustment. Then I glue both patterns. I just have to be careful to check if they're straight. When the glue is dry, I install my new patterns on the panther router and cut the tenons. Everything was going so well before the darn follower screw unscrewed itself. This messed up one tenon a little bit. But nothing that a little bit of glue can't solve. 
but I wasn't near being done. Dust doesn't just end up all over my face, there's also a ton ending up on the ground. But after cleaning all of this, I noticed that I cut one stretcher too short. <laughs> I'm forced to get another piece of emulac and make a new one. Now this is better. I need to take care of the big stretcher. This one is too big for the panto router. I make the tenon with the table saw and a hand saw. I figured that using a chisel instead of ANSA was easier. This is how everything will fit together. Speaking of fit, this is a dry fit for my whole base. Now I need to glue those nice pieces of wood. To do so, I use construction adhesive. This is as simple as spreading glue inside the mortises, on the tenons, and putting everything together. I begin by gluing only the sides assembly and clamp everything. Since I don't want a crooked workbench, I check the diagonals to make sure of its squareness. Since it's not square, I use another clamp to force it into squareness. This took a little while, but I managed to glue both sides. I just leave both glue ups like that overnight. The next morning, the glue is right and I can remove the excess glue. Even the one inside the mortises. Then I sand everything. This is way easier now than waiting after everything is glued. But when I was sanding, I noticed that I glued one stretcher upside down. I'll use a piece of scrap wood to illustrate what happened. My tenon is not centered, so on one side it's perfect, and on the other one, eh, it's out of alignment. To fix this, I plane one piece of scrap to the right thickness. When I'm satisfied, I cut it to size and glue it in place. Now I can start to work on the leg vise. On my actual leg vise, I keep the chuck vertical by adjusting this wooden screw. For my new workbench, I'll use this crisscross, which will keep the chop parallel by itself. But before I start anything, I need to bug René again, to help me to get a piece of oak from the wood rack, which is still inside my old chop. I will now transform this piece of wood into my new leg vice chop. The first thing I do is to cut two pieces out of it and plane them straight. From a distance, they look perfect, but if you have a closer look, you have to be blind not to see that my thickness planer left awful marks onto the wood. So, before I glue both pieces together, I sand them. Next, I use a little bit of glue to glue them together. One thing for sure, I'm glad glue can be bought by the gallon. When the glue is dry, I make one side straight on the jointer. 
The other one is done on the table saw. Next, I cut the bottom. With the crisscross itself, I figure out the placement of the mounting pin. Then I carry over this mark onto both sides. I go on the drill press and drill one hole on both sides of the piece, directly on the line. I need to finish the hole with a hand drill. Here you can see that the hole looks perfect. I just need to try it with the actual pin. Yeah, it's perfect. If I look at my actual chap, I find it too thin. The one I cut, ah, too wide. To fix this, I just rip a piece out. Now I need to drill the hole on the chop. I begin by moving it a little bit up. Next I transfer the line I made on the leg to the chop. Just as I did the last time, I make a mark on both sides. But when I go to the drill press, I can't reach the line because the bensa table is in the way. I just remove it. Then I can drill both holes exactly like the last time. Another success story. Next, I mark the center of the leg and with this mark, I'm able to center the metal plate from the kit and trace the width of the long mortise for the crisscross. Then, using my new router, I cut the mortise. It's perfect for the bottom plate. I just need to make both ends square. But looking at this more closely, I can see that the plate has to be deeper than what I did. Mission accomplished. When I try to fit the top of the crisscross, I notice that I need to remove wood there also. Now I need to repeat all the same operations on the chop. When I'm done, I can try it. The movement works fine, but this doesn't close. I figure out that if I remove the metal plate, it's better. I put the plate back, measure what I need to remove, adjust the router half of that, and recut where the plates are. After reassembling it, it's perfect. I just need to trace around the leg, so I'll be able to replace it at the same place later on. Disassemble it and drill a small hole where the vice screw will end up. Next, I reassemble it again and continue the holes I've started on the drill press and inside the chop also. This way, both pieces will have their reference at the same place. Next, I have to install this nut on the leg. I begin by measuring its size and drill the leg to the right depth. Mm -hmm. 
Next, I measured the size of the screw, add a little bit, and from the other side, I drilled the rest of the hole. I used the same bit to drill the chop. Now I can trace and inlay the nut in place. When it's done, I screw it in place. Now I'm ready to assemble everything together. To try the vise, I need to screw the vise screw. Now I can try it for the first time. Wow, it works great. I mean, really great. So now I can disassemble everything again and glue the fixed part of the vise to the actual workbench leg. Next, I glue the stretchers. Clamp everything. To do this requires several long clamps, but I manage it. The next morning, the glue is dry and I can clean the excess glue. Then I sand what I didn't sand before. When I'm done, I clean the base just before brushing its first coat of finish. I look like a circus clown walking on my workbench like that, but it's still easier than doing that on the floor. A couple of hours later, the finish is dry enough so I can sand it and dust it with a wet rag. Then I can brush the second coat. The workbench base is completed, but it's far from being done. To see the rest, you'll have to come back to the woodpecker.